When I was a child, I met Stanley Donham, who was a great, as you know, American director, who was friends with Stanley Kubrick. And one day, I get a telephone call from him, and he says to me, Mary, said, don't tell anyone, uh, but Stanley Kubrick's going to call you because he saw you in Cabaret. He thought you were German because you had a heavy German accent in the film. And I told him that I'd known you ever since you were a child and that you weren't German at all and you spoke perfect English. So he's going to call you for his next film. So I was very excited, but then I didn't think about it anymore. And one day I was in bed with pneumonia and a huge fever. And the phone rings and it's Stanley. And, uh, and he, of course, he said to me, well, he didn't let me get a word in edgewise, which I didn't anyway because I couldn't speak. But apart from the fact that I wouldn't know what to say. But um, he carried on about Cabaret and the scenes he loved in Cabaret and my acting and every detail of what he liked. And then he ended up by saying, uh, I want you for my next film uh, to play an English uh, countess uh, in a book uh, that I'll send you called Vanity Fair um, and William Thackeray. And, um, and you play Lady Linden with Ryan O'Neill, and that's all I can tell you, and tell me what you think. And so he sent me the book, and I read it, and I met him six months later, actually. Of course, you don't refuse. So six months later? Six months great. later, I met Stanley in London for the preparation of the film. So I walked in for costumes and, and makeup and, and hair, and that's when I, I met him for the first time in London. So, is it true that the first few months of the shoot, you were there in person waiting, but actually went to the door? So for the first few months, I was in London preparing, so doing all kinds of minuet lessons and, and proper aristocratic English lessons and, and uh, all kinds of fan lessons and things like riding, riding side saddle lessons and things like that. And then we went to Ireland, where we were supposed to film the whole movie. And I'd been a great friend of, of Peter Sellers, and he then said to me, listen, there's this old castle there, and there's a wing of this castle that you can rent, and you'll feel in the mood, and you know, you'll get right into the character and all of that, so you should get them to rent you this place. So, of course, they were delighted. Little did I know when I got there that it was the most run-down, cold, <laughs> depressing place ever, with hardly any electricity and everything. And I ended up in the countryside in Ireland by myself, when everybody else was in Dublin having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, uh, you know, I had visions of riding every day, but it actually rained every day. So. And I stayed there for three months, and every day Stanley would say to me, Maybe I'll need you tomorrow, maybe I'll need you tomorrow. And of course, I never did one day shoot in, in, in Ireland because they all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, the first assistant director, Brian Cook, called me up and he said, Mary, so we're packing up and going to England because there have been some uh, strange telephone calls and Stanley is, uh, is not happy about them and he's moved his entire family. He's in Scotland as we speak. <laughs> And the whole film will be closed down and, and we're moving. This was like three months late into the into the what, future. And what would this like to see about IRA threat or something? Maybe like something. Anyway, he, he whatever it was, he said, I'm leaving. <laughs> and uh, they closed down the movie. So, of course, we had to move to London. The movie was closed down for weeks. Uh, poor Ken Adams, who had all the location work, had to relocate to all the location, which is very difficult, as you'll see, in these beautiful castles and incredible environments. They had to redo the whole thing in England. And, uh, and I sat uh, here in London waiting to, you know, to, and I was, uh, in the end, a year on this picture uh, wow. of filming, yes. The, the fact that you were for three months in Ireland without, without shooting one scene. And Christmas came along and I said, Stanley, can I go home for Christmas? No, I may need you to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and the, the other thing I think is that um, he, his attention to detail was the second scenario, wasn't it? So he was very much uh, into, in the, very rigorous with detail and he could only really, um, I mean, he wanted to see everything as it was going to be through his lens before deciding if he liked it or didn't like it. So you had to be 
really ready at all times, fully costumed and made up and wigs and everything for, for the lighting, for everything, for the weather, for, for, for all of that. And he was in minute detail, some scenes we had to redo literally hundreds of times because just for, you know, um, the minutest thing. And of course in this film, uh, there were a lot of, as you'll see, candle lights and beautiful lighting and, and all kinds of, of uh, technical things that were quite complicated. So a lot of reach, you know, shooting and shooting and shooting until he got it right. But usually there will be a standard.